What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of SmackDown. It was the Go Home Show. It was actually already um, pre-taped. They did a double taping for last week's SmackDown because the talent's already uh, in Saudi Arabia. So we gotta talk about what happened on this show. And uh, there was some good stuff leading into Crown Jewel. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm definitely excited to see how some of these matches are going to play out. But before we get into that, we also got to talk about before the show uh, <clears throat> even started, there was some recent releases from WWE. Apparently, Baron Corbin has been released. Uh, Tegan Knox has been released. And uh, Indy Hartwell has been released as well. Kind of shocking. Especially with the uh, Indy Hartwell situation because tonight she ended up having a match, <clears throat> a, a tag team match with um, Candice, uh, Candice LeRae versus uh, Bailey and um, Naomi. So obviously the show was pre-taped from last week. So seeing her actually have a match but knowing that she's not still in the company was kind of weird to see. But it was unfortunate and like I said, kind of weird because we just saw her. You know being featured recently on smackdown television so i don't know why they decided to uh and especially with uh baron corbin I, I think you know he was trying to he was doing a he was i guess you could say there was a resurgence in his career when they took him back down to nxt and it seemed like they were going to do some great things with him bringing him back to the main roster that didn't pan out it, it was just one of those things where it was like it's, it's definitely unfortunate and i'm maybe we'll get some more information on why they were released but it you know it, it definitely does suck and the same thing with tegan ox i don't feel like even though we've seen her rarely on television and i know injuries have been a, a big factor just in her career trajectory i don't feel like she was given a a, a big opportunity or a fair enough opportunity in the long run you know to really try to get over so i don't know man it's, it's very unfortunate i don't like to hear these type of things um hopefully they're able to you know further their careers in other companies whether it's aew or tna wherever they go you know hopefully they're able to you know further their careers going forward so i'm wishing them nothing but the best but that was the latest big news before the show even started so we get into the show and they start off with Liv and Nia. Nia comes out there, cuts a promo saying, I'm I'm a dominant women's champion. And if Liv thinks she's really about to come in here and take care of business, she not. She has another thing coming. Then obviously Raquel, Liv, and Dominic come out there. And Liv makes a very good point. Liv makes a very good point in, you know, hyping herself up. She said, You're not the only person that, you know. Uh, made a name for themselves recently. I'm the one that retired Becky Lynch. So she's kind of going with that angle now. I retired Becky Lynch. You know, she also, she didn't, I don't, she don't, she didn't really mention it, but, you know, they did take out Rhea, uh, Rhea Ripley recently, earlier this week. And she's kind of on this roll. And she made another great point that, hey, I already beat you if you don't remember. I beat you earlier this year, Naya. So, if anything, it's going to be easy work for me to beat you again. And that's when uh, Tiffany, <clears throat> Tiffany Stratton comes out there. She comes out there and she makes it very clear like, hey, 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 calm down, uh, uh, Liv. <clears throat> I may end up just cashing in on you at Crown Jewel. And then, you know, Naya's like, see, you got, you got, you got to worry about Tiffany you know, he, he, not just only me. And then I like the fact that Tiffany, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, slow down there, Naya. I can cash in on you too. And I love that. I love the fact that she's like, yeah, I can cash in on you as well. And Liv brought up the fact, like, see, you got to worry about your best friend. I ain't got to worry about my friends. They, they're going to stick up for me. They're going to have my back. But you got to worry about yours. And I like the fact that Tiffany's like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of both of y'all. So it doesn't matter. All I know is that Crown Jewel, somebody's getting cashed in on. It could be you, Nia. It could be you, Liv. And then this is where things got interesting. <laughs> so <clears throat> Tiffany's but starts talking to Liv. He's like, hey, Liv, if I cash in on you, does Dominic, comes, does Dominic come with me now? You know, because I, I need a little dirty in my life. I'm like, whoa, what the hell? 
This nigga Dominic just exists and he just gets bitches, bro. Like she's over there talking about if I win the title, does he go does he come with me? Does he come with the title? Cause I would like that. I'm like, this nigga Dominic wins. He wins. He's the ultimate winner, bro. He literally just exists and gets the ladies. I love it. That was that was a great segment. I love what they're teasing there. I love the idea and the fact that they're teasing the uh, the cash in. And obviously, Nia wants her to cash in on Liv, but Tiffany's kind of standing up for herself saying, no, I can cash in on whoever I want. And it may be you, Nia. And honestly, I think it's going to be Nia. I think Nia's going to cash in. I mean, I think uh, Tiffany's going to cash in on Nia. And, and uh, you know, it, I think that would be a pretty cool moment. And they can build a feud off of that. Because Nia has been treating Tiffany like trash, honestly. So, I think that would be a, a way to get her back. And honestly, it's probably going to make Tiffany more of a face. Because people are going to cheer for that. So, we're going to see how that plays out. But I like this opening segment. I love the fact that Tiffany is like, hey, bro. I can cash in on whoever I want to, including you, Naya. So I like that she's standing up for herself. Next, we got to talk about the biggest segment of the show. This, to me, was like the best part of tonight's show. We got to talk about the whole situation with the bloodline. So Roman comes out there with Jimmy. And Jimmy's basically talking to Roman and keeping it real. He's like, look, bro. You know I love you. You know I acknowledge you as the tribal chief, but you got to listen to me on this one, bro. The bloodline, the OG bloodline, they they have the numbers game, and we we don't have the numbers game. It's just us, and we need help, and we're going to need his help. We're going to need Jay's help, so we're going to have to squash the beef. And you can hear the ch crowd was chanting squash the beef. So they kind of added into the promo as well. Crowd wanted them, you know, to squash the beef. I'm like, yo, we're going to have to squash the beef with him in order for this to work. And then before Roman could even say anything to get the microphone, Jay music hit. Jay comes down to the ring. And you can see Roman looking around at the crowd because he's looking around and he's seeing this is who Jay is now how over he is this is the culmination of main event jay uso crouch is electric even when his music stopped they're still singing his song it was great to see and roman had to look around and acknowledge the fact that this is not the same jay from a few years ago jay comes out there and he he lays it out on the line he says look man the only reason why I'm out here, because Solo cost me the IC title and for my brother. It's taking everything in my, in, in my body to even stand in this ring with you. Because at the end of the day, I never forgot how you did me. I never forgot the, the physical abuse, the emotional abuse, the mental abuse, all the stuff that you had done to me. I never forgot about that. I never forgot about that. If this is going to work, we are not your lackeys. I am your equal. You are not my tribal chief. You're my cousin. We're family. I'm doing this because I'm trying to show everybody it's family above everything. Don't be my tribal chief. Be my cousin. He's my brother. We're all on the same playing field. And if I get any kind of indication of disrespect, of you trying to treat me less than, I'm out. I'm walking away. So what do you want to do? How you want to do this? How you want to make this work? Great promo. Emotional promo because you, we've watched Jay get abused for so long. And for him to finally get to say this to, to Roman. And Roman had to take it in. He didn't say a single word. Loved it. His facial expressions spoke. When Roman finally did say something, he said one single word. Yeet and the crowd went crazy. Just one word. Yeet. Fantastic, bro. This is the payoff to long-term long storytelling. When you have long-term uh, long storytelling and it's done correctly, this is the payoff you get. This moment right here, 
They've been doing and telling this story for so long. And Jay standing up for himself and finally telling his his older his cousin, like, hey, bro, I love you, but what you did was foul. If you want this to work, we equals. No more of this. We sub, you know, we bow down to you shit. We're not doing that. We doing it differently. And I love it. And Roman accepted. it. He didn't have to say too much. He just said yeet. And that's everything he needed to say. And it was a cool visual when Jimmy put up the ones. Then Jay put up the ones. And then Roman put up the ones. Fantastic segment. Go watch it. If you've been a fan of the Bloodline story, you're going to love this segment. <clears throat> Go watch it. Fantastic stuff. Loved it. I still, I still do think the OG Bloodline will lose. I think they can take a loss here. Um, you, you're still trying to build up for uh, War Games, the War Games match between the OG Bloodline and the new, uh, new Bloodline. I do think Sammy is going to be an integral part going forward. So we'll see how it plays out. But this was great. This was fantastic. Go watch this segment if you haven't already. I, I Me t saying it doesn't do justice of how great it was just to watch that live. Well, semi-live. It wasn't technically live, but you know what I mean. Um... We also got to talk about what uh, what's really going on with the Cody Rhodes and and Seth, uh, not Seth Cody and and Randy Orton and Gunther and Kevin Owens how they all intertwine. So earlier in the show, uh, Kevin Owens dropped like a uh, car video, and I love those videos like him just recording in the car. He was like, "Look, I tried to reach out to you, Randy. You never returned any of my calls, so this is the only way I can reach out to you." He's like, look, I didn't want, I don't want to fight you. This is not what I wanted to do, but you hurt me, bro. You know, like, I, I used to look up to you. I thought we was really good, great friends. You betrayed me. You betrayed me. So because of that, I'm going to have to end you. It's not something that I want to do, but I'm not the bad guy here. You did this. So now I got to do what I got to do. I love just those videos. Love that, bro. Just him recording in his car like, like, I'm over it. I, it's not what I wanted to do, but it is what it is. And you pay attention. Kevin Owens keeps wearing a Dusty Rhodes shirt of some form. So you know that they're, they're going to continue the feud. It's not done. This is, it's, uh, just pay attention to that. And even tonight, after the main event, you had uh, Randy Orton and... Uh, and Cody going against Gunther and Ludwig uh, for the main event. But before they went out there, <clears throat> here's another leather seat that they've been watering. And, and for a while now, if y'all paid attention, Cody's in the locker room getting ready for the match. Randy comes out there. And between them, the way the cameras frame, the WWE Championship is hung up on like in one of the cubicles in the locker, whatever. It's hung up between them. Cody's, you know, lacing up his boots and stuff. And he's like, you ready for the night? Yeah, I'm ready. And then he was like, hey, man, I know you about to, you know, handle your business with Kevin. Hey, save some for me when you're done, please. And Randy's like, look, I'm, I'm sorry, man. When I'm done with Kevin, it won't be nothing left of him. He's like, ah, damn, man. I guess I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. And while he's saying that, he looks right at the title. Once again, he has this lingering look. He looks right at the title, and then he says, I'm sure you'll figure out something. And then he walks off. Yep, Randy wants that title, bro. This is not the first time he's done that talking to Cody, and Cody doesn't realize it. He wants the title. And just how he said it, you know, Cody's like, man, I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. You know, I'm not, gonna sh I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. And Randy pretty much saying it without saying it, I'm like, I'm not, I'm sure you'll figure out something to do. And yeah, bro, I, I cannot wait. Randy, Cody feud, chef's kiss. I can't wait. Can't wait. So we get to the match. Obviously, pretty solid match. Enjoyable. Um, I figured that Cody and Randy was going to win. Uh, Randy ended up hitting Gunther with the RKO um, towards the end of the match. He tried earlier in the match, but, you know, Ray, uh, Gunther countered it. But he was able to hit him with it this time. Gunther rolled out the ring. And uh, Cody ended up hitting the crossroads on Ludwig for the one, two, three victory. I figured Ludwig was going to eat the pin there. You wasn't going to have Gunther eat the pin. So they're celebrating. 
Cody celebrating on the turnbuckle. Randy celebrating. All of a sudden, another figure. Uh, this time he didn't have his hood up. He just had on a black hoodie with another dusty rose t-shirt. Comes into the ring. Hits Randy Orton with a steel chair. Once Cody realizes what's going on, all of a sudden, Gunther, well, actually, Cody's looking at KO after the damage has been done. Like, what the hell? After KO attacked Randy, then Gunther comes in the ring, starts to choke out Cody. He's choking him out. And Kevin Owens is just watching, just watching it happen. Officials come out there, try to break it up. And we go off the air with Cody grasping at the ropes, trying to get some air as Gunther trying to send him to a deep, deep sleep. So great, great, great way to end off the show. I'm still in the in the camp of Cody most likely will lose. And that will be because of Randy Orton. It's going to be because of, uh, not Randy Orton, because of uh, uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, after his match with, uh, with Randy, I do feel like Kevin Owens is going to win. And I talked about it in my preview and predictions. I think Kevin Owens is going to win. And I think it's a situation where Kevin Owens gets involved in that match and cost uh, Cody the win. And I see Cody passing out with Gunther choking him out. Simple as that. Like Gunther said, you're going you're gonna to ask Randy how it felt to pass out. That's exactly what's going to happen. Gunther is going to choke out Cody. And it will be because of kevin owens overall solid solid go home show nothing too crazy but there was some great stuff when the stuff that was fantastic that you wanted to see like the bloodline stuff cinema great stuff looking forward to how things are going to play out at crown jewel but comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy this episode of smackdown and are you guys excited for crown jewel tomorrow i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace